Hello, I'm Gemma and this is Nonfic Books and I'm coming for the final wrap up for Nonfiction November and I have three previous review videos. So the first three books that I'm going to mention will probably be relatively quickly mentioned. First off, my absolutely favourite book of the month that I have a glowing review for, so go and have a look at it if you're interested. All the videos will be linked down below. And this is Fiona Reynolds' The Fight for Beauty, Our Path to a Better Future. And I originally chose this as the controversial one, but then I sort of changed my mind and had this as my important book. But in the end, I didn't finish my other important or controversial book, so this is sort of my pick for both of them. And I really recommend everyone goes to read it. It's definitely more UK based, but the points she makes are applicable across the board. And this is how we move forward conservation wise from where we are now. And it's beautifully, beautifully written. I highly recommend you pick this book up. The next one was my fascinating read. And because I can never stick to a TBR, instead of doing one on Victoria, I looked at Maids, Wives of Widows, um, exploring early modern women's lives, 1540 to 1740 by Sarah Reed. This was really enjoyable. Um, again, the full review video will be linked down below, but factually, absolutely amazing. The only problem with this was that it didn't really feel like a full um, non-fiction book as a whole. Each, each chapter was great, the writing was nice, but it just didn't seem a very rounded finished book. Um, so as a reference book, this is absolutely fantastic, but it did seem to be, I think it is from a slightly academic press anyway, yeah, pen and sword, um, and it definitely felt like that a little bit, but it is very accessible and very enjoyable, so I highly recommend that if you're interested in women's history. And then the one that I don't have here, because I don't know where I've put it, I think I've taken it back to our house, um, was my totally new to me one which was a real surprise how much I enjoyed it, and that's Jen Smulig's A Journey to Russia. This was brilliant. It was a travelogue around Russia, and I know absolutely nothing about Russia. I thought it was very enjoyable. It took me a little bit of time to get into it, but I really thought he did a great job in a relatively small book about exploring Russia, introducing enough history to explain the current culture, and I really thoroughly enjoyed that. The other non-fiction book that I actually finished this month is The Little Book of, book of Hygge, um, The Danish Way to Live Well by Mirk Wiking. This was sweet enough, um, it's very very pretty, um, inside there are loads of great illustrations throughout, so if you're looking for a little Christmas present for someone, this would be great, but if you know anything about Hygge, um, this doesn't add anything to it, it's just very pretty and nice enough. Um, so if you haven't read anything about it, that's quite fun, but if you have, I really wouldn't bother picking anything up. And then I have two books that I started but have yet to finish, and the first one was the one that I mentioned in my original TBR video for my important one, which is Carl Sagan's The Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark. I'm glad that I haven't finished this yet, because it is the type of book, it's stunning so far, but he gets so much information in there and really makes you think that it is something I really want to take my time over and sort of dip into, read a chapter or two, process, and then move on a little bit. Um, so this will probably take me a good few months to actually finish. I'm only, only a relatively short amount of the way through. Um, but so far, really, really liking this, and I will very probably pick up his cosmos as well to read the more sort of science rather than religion side of his as well. And then the next one that I started and haven't finished is Madeleine Bunting's The Plot, a biography of an English acre. Now I saw this on Eva, Eva Alexandria's channel and I just really, well I think it was the other one um, she wrote about on an island or something, I can't remember what that title was called, but I had to pick this up because I live really rather close to here and know this area incredibly well. So I thought it would be really fascinating because when she's describing the area, this acre that her dad owned, who was a sculptor, who built a church on it and filled it with his sculptures and was quite a difficult character by the sounds of it. I know that area, I've walked past this. I actually weirdly, only a week or two before finding out about this book, was discussing going for a walk up to this church 
with um, one of my neighbours. So this is really interesting so far. Her writing is lovely and I will definitely read this fairly shortly and pick up her other book because, again, it sounds fantastic. But then, right at the end of the month, considering it's non-fiction November, and I tend to read more non-fiction books anyway, all of a sudden I got into a massive sort of fiction drive and read four books in the last sort of four or five days. And the first one, which sort of got me back into reading a little bit of fiction, was Tracy Chevalier's Burning Bright. I absolutely love Tracy Chevalier. She's one of my favourite authors. I love her historical fiction. Um, this isn't one of her absolute best ones, but it's still really enjoyable. And it has William Blake, and it's all around the time of the French Revolution in London. The characters are lovely in this. The storyline is perfectly fine, but I really enjoyed it, even though it's not one of her best. So I wouldn't start with this if you've never read any Trace de Chevalier. I think my favourite so far is um, Remarkable Creatures, which is about Mary Anning, the fossil hunter. Um, but I Trace de Chevalier is someone that I want to read her whole back catalogue. I'm almost there. And this is something that I'm glad I've read, but I probably won't return to certainly any time soon. The next one was just something I picked up at Tesco's because I really fancied having something to read and all my books are at our house instead of at my mother-in-law's, which is where I am. And this was the only thing that particularly appealed and that's The Tenderness of Wolves by Steph Penny. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this was absolutely fabulous. Um, it won the Costa Book of the Award in 2006, I believe and is really rather beautiful. It's desolate, it's bleak, it's set in the Canadian wilderness. And I'm not sure if this is true, but I saw on Twitter somebody mentioned that while she was writing this, she had such agoraphobia that she could barely go outside. And yet her descriptions of the scenery are just absolutely beautiful. It's really dark, it's really well written, and I will certainly be picking up her third book, which is Under a Pole Star, because this sort of continues in this area and time period. I don't believe it's actually a sequel, but the sort of evocative nature that she described, I definitely want to return to. So I will be picking up more of her work. And then the final two I read on my e-reader, so I don't have any sort of fancy picture for you or anything. First one was um, Rosamund Pilchard's The Pilchard? I don't think so. Rosamund Put my teeth back in. Rosamond Pilcher's The Empty House. I've heard so many good things about Rosamond Pilcher, and I just don't think this was a good place to start. I thought the characters were underdeveloped, I thought it was full of insta-love, the scenery was beautiful and the writing was lovely, but the story and the plot and the character development I thought was absolutely appalling, um, and just, well, wasn't there, basically. So, if you like Rosamond Pilcher, tell me what book to read, because her writing was lovely. So I would be interested to pick up another book of hers, but I really, really didn't rate that book at all. And then finally, I finished with a book by Therese Tomlinson, I believe, called A Swarming of Bees. And again, I will put the titles of all the books I'm discussing down below. And this was a really fun book. Um, I saw her speak at the Rydell Book Festival probably three or four years ago now, um, when they were doing a session on lo um, authors who based books locally to here. And this book is based in Whitby around the time of the Synod, which is where they describe where they decided on whether to follow the Roman calendar for Easter or the Celtic calendar for Easter, among another a large number of other things. And Hilda was the sort of head of the monastery and nunnery there. Absolutely fantastic woman. And this is a historical fiction, slightly slightly fantasy vibe to it, although it's not sort of a magical thing, really, but um, beautifully done. The main character is the herb wife who works for the monastery. The characters are lovely, I really enjoyed it, and I believe she's quite a um, sort of small, not very well-known author, so if it sounds like your thing, please do go and check it out, because I think she really deserves to have a little bit of attention on her. Overall, Nonfiction November I viewed as quite a success. I thought it was really great fun. I loved hearing about the books that everyone was reading um, and hopefully more of you enjoyed getting into a little bit of nonfiction, even though the months seemed to absolutely disappear ridiculously fast. Um, Olive and I will be picking two winners obviously from the comments that we have previously had. Um, I will do a separate announcement video because we have yet to pick these 
and uh, hopefully we'll see you in a video fairly soon for some December books. December, oh my goodness. Anyway, any comments or questions, leave them down below. Bye!